Hi, and welcome to My Wonderful Knitting Life. My name is Margaret, and I am the host of this channel. And this channel is mostly about knitting, although sometimes I like to include a little bit of crochet, sewing, and anything else I might be busy doing. Thank you for joining me. Uh, this podcast today is going to be a little bit messy. I will include uh, some updates in my life at the end, but I will share the knitting first so that those of you who are here for just the knitting, um, you don't need to watch the end part. I always start with personal things and I'm realizing that some of you are like, let's just get to the knitting. So that's what I'm going to start with. Um, thank you for being here. If you are a long-term subscriber, I really appreciate your support. And if you are new to the channel, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel stay afloat. All right, on to the knitting. I also do want to mention um, the new introduction uh, that I have with the little ball of yarn rolling across the screen and becoming the heart with uh, my title, My Wonderful Knitting Life. Uh, my daughter Sarah created that. She has worked very hard uh, at a web and media design program at a college and she kindly put that together and it is kind of fun. And I have been very busy, so um, making all of the picture intros isn't going to be something I can do for the next couple of months. So uh, it's very joyful and I hope you enjoy that. This project that I'm wearing is what I'm going to start with. I know that I don't finish a lot of projects. As you can see from the table behind me, I am definitely a process knitter. I love the learning part of knitting. I love trying new things. I don't always get to the finish line. However, this project did get to the finish line. It was part of a cowl with two friends of mine. This is the Botanic Shawl by Stephen West and my friends finished it within about three to four months. I finished it or almost finished it and you will probably know that if you've been uh, a viewer for a while, uh, but I ripped it out last summer because it was a very short wide triangle and that just isn't the style of shawl that I like to wear. I like very elongated scarf-like types of shawls. So uh, that's what I turned this into. I did every other increase and that worked really well for me. And it is much longer and it has this fantastic gradual change of color thanks to the yarn that I use. So I'll just give you a, a view of the final product, which I'm happy to say is done and I have worn it. I went home to Ottawa for March break and I went out to lunch with my two friends that we did the cow. And of course I wore it to, to show that to them that I finally finished it. So a year and two months after the cow began, I came to the finish line. So I'm very proud of myself for sticking at that. And it's turned out really uh, lovely. I love the green, I love the purple. This is a Zauber ball, the fingering weight Zauber ball, crazy Zauber ball maybe, I'm not sure. Um, in my past uh, episodes, I put all of the yarn color description down and I think I might have added that on the Ravelry page. So it is a Zauber ball, but it's also Holst Super Soft in maybe the A Crew color. Uh, I wasn't sure how I would like the Super Soft right up to my neck, but um, I'm really liking that. And I'm not finding it scratching uh, at all, and I have very sensitive skin, but I love wool. Uh, I probably could take a few lessons on how to, to do a nice little tie up here. I'm, I'm often uh, resorting to my, my girl guide uh, past of right over left and under, left over right and under, when we used to tie the scarves uh, back in the day. I'm probably giving away my age by saying that, but so be it. Anyway, I love it. It's very warm and comfortable and it's pretty and I do like colorful things. So that's the Botanic Shawl by Stephen West. All right, on to whips. So I uh, did go uh, back to Ottawa for March break and that kind of had me leaning more towards easier things to knit because I was traveling and taking projects with me. 
and I was really busy and I'll talk more about that later. So some of the more complicated projects that I do have on the go, I've kind of had to put them on the shelf for a little while, uh, but I will update you on, on what's going on with them. So as you know, I've been working on the beautiful Albertine jacket project by Sitzel Hoivik. And it's a little squished up right now here. Um, what I was doing was uh, cutting the steaks the last time I podcasted, and I did them by felting. So that was new to me. I used to just use my sewing machine, but I don't have one here anymore. So that's another part of the story I'll talk about at the end. So I felted them instead, and I really liked doing that. That works really well with 100% non-superwash wool. So I've cut down the front. Sorry, it's a bit cumbersome with nothing really being sewn together. I've cut down the front and I have cut both sleeves, but it's not sewn at the top yet. And I am continuing to work on the sleeves, which are at least a third, if not a half, knitted up. And I'm doing them two at a time on two sets of needles. And I'm also adding in all of the embroidery with the sequins. You can see there's one right there. And on the front, I've also worked on some of the embroidery and adding the sequins. Oh, I think it's on the other side. I've mostly worked on it. And I'm really enjoying that part. It, it's definitely uh, a nice change from doing, doing the knitting. Um, and, um, I, I really do hope to pick this up a little bit more and get it done. I absolutely love it. I sort of did a try on, even though the shoulders aren't sewn at the top, just to see what the size would be like, because I've done the large with this rather than the extra large. I'm not someone who likes tight fitting things. So I tend to go up a size to make sure there's lots of positive ease. However, this jacket tends to be more of a, a fitted garment. And on my other jacket, um, the Olivia jacket, which I'm gonna do a little bit of shoulder altering, really happy with it, but the shoulder, I have narrow shoulders. So that's, that's more me than it is the design. Um, I, um, I need to do, to do that. And um, then I can work on getting this one finished. And the button band that you add on gives more, uh, more girth to the garment, if you want to call it that. I did try it on. It fits. It's snug. I, I wouldn't want to put on any, any weight, but I think the button band is probably going to help manage that situation. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't need to wear anything heavy under this because this is uh, knit double. Okay, the whole thing is knit double. So it's a very warm garment. You could even wear a very light blouse underneath if you wanted, uh, given that, that it's uh, wool and very warm. So I haven't done a lot on that project, nor have I done a lot on my Alpenbloom um, yoke. So uh, this is the Alpen Bloom. I'm in love with it. I used a Croy FX, which is a very slow striping sock yarn. And it tends to be a little bit more on the heavier fingering, almost a sport weight. And the dark purple is holst super soft. I did completely finish the yoke. So I am ready now to split for the sleeves and the body and then just work on uh, that simple knitting, which I have to say right now, um, that is absolutely okay with me, just doing the stocking at. Um, I'm really, really busy and overwhelmed with both work and my home life. So uh, once I get this uh, separated, I'll hopefully just zoom all the way through that and um, I just lost a stitch, so I'm gonna put that back on. Um, I'll zoom through that and hopefully have it done for next winter. I don't know um, that I'll knit on it through the summer because summer is very hot in the Ottawa area and it's hard to have anything 100% uh, wool sitting on your lap. I do find super wash is better for that. I can knit with super wash in the summer, but not so much the, the heavy, the heavy wool. 
All right, so uh, behind me, I have some notes, but I'm kind of all over the place today. Behind me, I have my Rocket Tea, which I have worked on, and it looks a little crumpled up back there, but, um, but I have been working on it. I've added a bit to the body. Uh, my, my friend Sylvia, who is an online knitting friend, I've never met her in person, but she's absolutely wonderful. She told me that when you are knitting a sweater, you should always finish your sleeves before completely finishing the body because your sleeves and your neck edging can pull the garment up a little bit and change the length. And given that I am quite tall, I'm five foot eight, I do sometimes find that I have thought a garment was the right length and then when I finish it, it's not as long as I really wanted it to be. And I never make anything cropped. Um, it, they look ridiculous on me and I'm not going there. And the minimum I find from armpit down to the bottom of a sweater would be 16 inches. I often go 17 and 18 and I find that's a much more comfortable length for me. Summer tops, I might go a little bit shorter because I'm wearing shorts or capri pants but uh, I don't like things short. And if they work for you, that's fantastic. They just don't look good on me. And I don't even think it's an age thing. I think it's just my body type doesn't work with that. So my rocket tee on the back there, what I have done since I last podcasted is added to the length and I have knit both the sleeves and I have completed uh, the I-cord edging. So on this one, you can see I chose to do the pop of yellow for the I-cord edging. This one looks fantastic. It was completely curling up on me when I finished that and I was not very happy. So before I went on um, to working on the other one, directional issues here again, um, what I did with this one is I just put it in a little bit of water and I laid it out to dry. And that just changed it completely. It just settled down. It is laying flat. I love it. I'll just grab it. Bring it a little closer. Yeah, so this just turned out fantastic. It's got all of its drapiness back. Um, my sleeves are not what the pattern says. The pattern um, basically has you finish the sleeves as soon as you split for the body. Uh, I wanted a sleeve that was a little bit longer, not super long, but just a little bit longer. And I am hoping to wear this in spring, summer, fall. Probably not a lot in spring because in 40 degrees Celsius Humidex, I'm not going to be wearing this. <laughs> I'm going to be wearing probably a cotton dress. Um, but the I-cord is beautiful. I, I just love that finishing. I've done the other one, but take a look at the difference. This is crazy. It's just rolling right up on itself. And I haven't soaked this one or or put it um, in eucalyn or anything. And you can see that it's just like not behaving itself at all. So that really does show the magic of what blocking can do. And if that had continued to curl, I would have undone it and changed needle size or whatever I needed to do to get that to behave. But the blocking seems to have done the trick. I've uh, knitted down... Um, quite quite a bit but I'm really going to hold off on finishing the length until I finished the neck edging which again is going to take a little bit of concentration that's not potato chip knitting I want to get it right and I want to make this garment um, something that I'm going to wear so I'm going to take the time uh, to to do that to perfection I'm a bit picky I will rip things out if they don't look the way I want them to uh, so that's my rocket tee. It's a little bit on hold at the moment. Uh, you'll see why soon because I have some new things to share. All right, so I have gotten a bit of a sock mojo. So I do believe I showed this uh, sock tube to you the last time I podcasted. I picked this yarn up at my local yarn store and what I did was I took it to the Farmer Circle or the Sep des Fermières and that is an organization that I'm a member of. It mostly is weaving but they have a circular sock machine there 
and I have one in Ottawa, so I know the principles of how to use it, even though it's not the same brand as mine. So I tackled that, and I believe this is about 7.5 stitches per inch, and I think, um, I think it was 56 or 54 stitches, I can't remember. I have very, very narrow feet, extremely narrow. I honestly wish they were a little bit wider, um, because it has caused me some discomfort over the years, but that is uh, the sock that fits. I have not done anything with that yet, but I really enjoy looking at it, and it's there when I'm ready for it. I was very, very lucky to have a student for Teacher Appreciation Week send me a gift card for my local yarn store. My students are all aware of my knitting. I knit at school, at recess, at lunchtime. Um, it really helps me decompress. Often I'll just work through those times, but it is very healthy to take a break from your work. And knitting often um, gives me that, that uh, mental health check, if you wanna call it that. And so I went to my local yarn store and I bought this beautiful skein of yarn, which I have made into a sock tube. This sock tube, I decided to see if I could make the stitch count a little bit tighter. And I believe this one has come out more of an eight stitch per inch and the yarn recommended seven to eight stitches per inch. So that's what I've got here and I can feel the difference. This is definitely tighter. So I am, when I get the chance, I'm going to turn that into socks. And to be honest with you, if you get a 100 gram skein of yarn and you have it made up into a tube, and there are people who will do that for you, um, if you're interested in getting sock tubes or you can buy them from stores uh, ready-made like this. But to be honest with you, this, this is far more than one pair of socks. I can definitely get two out of this because remember, I'm gonna be adding um, the cuff and the heel and the toes and that the, the cuff and the toes is going to make what I have longer. So, so I've definitely got two sets here of socks or two, um, a pair of socks and a headband, which I also like to make with these. These make great little, little headbands for the winter. Um, and that's really easy to do. So we'll see, but I'm, I'm really loving that one. That one is super fun. So I, I've been definitely in the sock mojo frame of mind, and I do also hand knit socks. And I really want to start making some lace socks and cable socks. I've seen an awful lot of patterns that are super beautiful lately. And that's something, excuse me, I want to try. So again, this is from my local yarn store. And this sock has quite a story because I have been using many different needles. I've been experimenting with what I like best. And I started the cuff with a nine inch circular. And what I like to do with my nine inch circulars is put on the two inch needle on one side and the three inch on the other. And I find that gives me more to hold onto, which can make it more comfortable. So I think I worked down to about here with my circulars and then I decided I was gonna go to DPN. So I don't know why, I just wanted to switch it up a little bit. You have to be careful with doing that because it can change your gauge. I think I've been lucky and it's not affected me too much. But I switched to my DPNs which are six inches long. And I love working with DPNs. That's how I learned to knit socks um, maybe 20 years ago. And they were my go-to for years. But I always had eight inch DPNs and the Koigu ones that I, that I sorry, Chiaogu. Uh, the Chiaogu ones that I have are six inches and I love them, but I, I knit with three and then, sorry, four, three with my um, stitches on and then my fourth for knitting with. And a lot of people will have five altogether. So maybe that solves the problem that I was having 
with these ones because I kept having a stitch fall off the end of the needle. And like I said, I love DPNs, but that was proving to be a bit of an issue. So I did my heel flap and gusset, very much the traditional uh, style with the slip stitches. And I used a crochet hook to pick up my stitches for the first time. And I absolutely loved that. I, I saw that on a podcast and I can't remember who it was that did a little a mini video about that. And it was a game changer. It made it so much easier. So that was something I did differently. But after I had had so many stitches fall off, I, I switched to Magic Loop. I haven't knit many stitches with Magic Loop. This is a 40 inch 2.25 needle. And <clears throat> I'm really liking the Magic Loop. I find that maybe I'm a little faster on the Magic Loop than I was with the others, but honestly, I haven't gotten out a timer, so I don't know. But I've done something different. Amy from Noble Character Crafts suggests when she makes her socks, she always does a slip stitch, just like you would do with the heel, on the bottom of the foot just before the toes, because she said that's a spot where she wears out her sock. I don't really wear my socks out there, but I also uh, find that is where I have discomfort with my feet and a little cushioning um, I thought would be something that might be really helpful. So I have added that in to my sock and I'm almost at the toe and this is my first sock. So it's going to be a little while before I make the second one and really test it out. But I thought this was going to be worth a try. And her podcast is lovely. If you are looking for something new to watch, uh, she is a prolific knitter and crocheter. She's super interesting and sweet. And I always enjoy watching her channel when she, when she posts. So that was a new thing to try. So there we go. So this Screaming Orange project over here is from the pattern I think it's called Painted Pebbles Shawl by the Forest City Knit Girls. And that's also a really wonderful podcast. They are two sisters and a friend. They are in London, Ontario, Canada. And oh, and I forgot to mention I'm in Quebec, Canada. I usually say that at the beginning, but I forgot today. I'm a little all over the place. So I have made this shawl as per the pattern. I made it, made it for uh, my cousin and I made it in greens and that's on my project page as well on Ravelry. But I got this beautiful yarn from a local dyer um, where I live on the North, sh the North Shore of the St. Lawrence in Quebec. I live in a small mining town and we do have a yarn store. We're so lucky that uh, Julie keeps it going. She's fantastic. And I purchased this from a dyer. They don't dye very much, but uh, this is the most gorgeous yarn. I can't remember the composition, but I'm sure it's in my show notes uh, quite a while ago. Uh, this was my school knitting project, and I wasn't really getting to it very much because I kept taking my socks to school. But what I've done with this project is I have basically taken the recipe for the edge of the increases and decreases because on one side this shawl is decreasing whoops and on the other side wants to run away on me on the other side it is increasing a little bit more than the decrease so you have a shawl that grows in width but it becomes very, very long and the type that you can wrap around yourself, which is my favorite, favorite kind, uh, the scarf, the scarf type. So it uses two 100 gram skeins. And what I'm doing is freestyling. I am freestyling this shawl and I am just changing colors whenever I feel like it. I've got a big color block of orange in the middle, and I think that's where I last showed this shawl. 
And then I decided, you know what, I weighed the yarn. And I'm doing that frequently because I want to use both skeins up completely. And then I decided to go into this stripey section where I did three orange stripes, then another section um, of the cream. Now I'm doing five orange stripes, then I'll go back to the cream and do three orange stripes. And then we'll see how much yarn I have of each one left. And then I'll make a decision on how to go uh, forward. So it's kind of fun to just pick and choose as you go. Uh, I can see making this shawl over and over and over, just freestyling it, maybe adding some texture in, because once you have that recipe that works for you, there's no holding you back. So a beautiful pattern, a wonderful podcast, uh, highly recommended and very enjoyable. And easy. That's why I've really picked this one up. It's just easy knitting and that's what I need right now. However, there's always that moment in your life where you have the need for a new cast on. <laughs> and that kind of hit me because I have wanted to make the sorrel sweater for quite some time. So this is the sorrel by Wool and Pine. And it is a beautiful sort of braided pattern on the yoke and then it is plain knitting on the bottom but the thing that's really interesting is that when you split for the sleeves and you stop doing those uh i think they're called dip stitches but it looks like a bit of a braid you turn the sweater inside out so that you're not purling because it's purl on the outside so you turn it inside out and then you just knit, 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 knit to finish it off. I am still doing the braid. So I am still doing a lot of purling, but I'm enjoying it so much I'm not really minding. So I have got this on some very small circulars because what I find with that is that I don't have to spend time pushing the stitches as much. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty tight there but I'm increasing the amount of purl stitches between my braids, which are coming out very uh, beautiful. I haven't soaked or blocked this, so it, and it's not, um, it's not spread out, so it's not that easy maybe for you to see how, how beautiful this pattern is at the moment, but trust me, it's gorgeous. And what I am doing to make it more interesting is I am switching colors as I go through. So I started with two yarns here and those yarns are both from Holstgarn. So this is the one that I'm holding the entire time throughout the sweater and this is their Highland hand dyed yarn and it's called Rosie. And they, and I got this in a big sale because they have been selling it off, but they also have a lot of hand dyed yarn in their, for socks, in their regular stock. So I've been holding this all the time, double with Tibikaka from Holst, which is a 100% alpaca. And I started with this very pale pink, which is called Heather Rose. And it's incredibly soft. This stuff is amazing. Now what I'm doing is I'm slowly switching to a yarn called Lotus, which isn't quite as neon as it's coming out on the screen. But I am slowly switching to that one. And they give you a recipe of how to marl in your colors. So that is something you don't have to worry about. It's in the pattern. And then I am turning into, and this looks fuchsia, but it's not, it's, um, it's kind of a dark purple. And I, I originally thought with this yarn, I was going to, oh, I'm looking for my swatch here. I was going to swatch um, for stripes because I intended on doing a striped sweater. But then I, I really fell in love with the sorrel and I thought, you know what, I could do a, a fade. And I've never done a fade with anything before. So I always want to try something new. So I've started to bring in my next color. 
And I am uh, right about here is where I started. I haven't done one of the dip stitches in that new color, but that's coming. And then I think that's really where it's going to start to be noticeable that I'm that I'm moving into another color. And I'm really enjoying this. It's something different. And the color changing, it keeps it interesting. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting more of that done. And, and you might be thinking, does this person only make yokes of sweaters? Because uh, she has been showing us a lot of yokes, but where's the body? Um, yeah, that's, that's a bit of a problem. I always need to be really uh, engaged and interested with something challenging. So I do find it hard once the pattern becomes more simple to keep going. But I'm hoping that my busy life right now is going to help me get to the more simple knits because I am looking for that in my life. I have one more thing to show and then I've got some acquisitions. So Summer Hut is a long way away here. We keep getting snow. We had snow last night. Uh, we even had a half snow day uh, at school where I work as a teacher because of the weather. And winter um, takes a long time to leave where I live. Our snow can still be present under trees and at the side of the highway at the beginning of June. And spring takes a really long time to warm up. So we think we might be getting there, but then it just stays cool for a really, really long time. That's going to change soon for me, but that's the life stuff. But I, but I do have in my mind, um, more that I'm that I would like to make some um, more t-shirt knits which you know this one is but I did start another project a while ago and when winter came I, I basically put it aside but I I am intending to pick this one up again this project uh, is the tessellation tee and it is crochet and Nitty Natty made this, which is where I sort of fell in love with it. She made it all in pink and it was so pretty. Mine is not pink, but it is coming along and I really want to keep working on this. This is really cute. And it's um, the first time I've done color work with crochet. So I'm still on the yoke, so that kind of makes me the queen of yokes at this point. Somebody in um, the comments a few podcasts ago said, you're the queen of color work because you're always doing something with color work. But now I'm starting to think maybe I'm the queen of yokes and not finishing things. But I really do want to finish this. It's a, it's a t-shirt and I'm making this with some more uh, holst garn. But this is their, co their coast line. This is nutmeg, and this one I think was called fig. Yeah, this is fig. And this is 55% wool and 45% cotton. I think it's that way. Not, it's um, not written in English here. But it is so incredibly soft and light, and I think a really great uh, summer, summer weight. It's not super soft, so it's the real deal. And I, I do really like, um, I really do like working with natural as much as possible. But I do have to give credit to Superwash because this one here would be Superwash. Um, my, my, my neon orange over here would be Superwash. And what I do find when I knit with Superwash is honestly, I knit twice as fast. It just slides on the needle so well. And if you're not a person that's prone to dropping stitches um, because it's slippery, um, it just goes really quick. So, you know, there's benefits of both and I use both. So really it's, it's your preference, but the superwash is quite fast to knit up with. So that's something that's in the queue. Gonna get there. I have a couple of acquisitions to share. One was a gift and one I bought when I was in Ottawa on my March break. So hold on just a second. So one sock yarn that I've always wanted to work with. Ooh, I'll just pull the price off here. There's a price tag on. If I can get that off successfully. Um, one yarn that I've always really wanted to work with that I've never, never had in my possession before 
is West Yorkshire Spinners. And this is the signature four ply. And they are a 75 wool, 25% nylon, but I believe, yeah, it's a, it's got 35% blue faced luster in it. And I know some people don't like that, but I love it. It gives it a very wool feeling and, and I really do love the wool. Um, I bought this from a little store in Ottawa called Yarns Yule Love. I'll put that in the show notes. They do have an online shop. They are a small uh, store, but they have beautiful yarns, wonderful people in the store. And I always enjoy dropping by there when I visit my cousin. She lives very close by, so hard to not go there. I also went because a friend of mine who lives here, I told her I would be driving by and I said, if you want anything, just let me know. I'll pick it up for you. And she did want something. So that is a really good way to satisfy your desire to buy yarn is to shop for someone else. <laughs> anyway, I picked this up and um, I can't wait to start with it. It's got a nice uh, striping. And I thought, you know what, I could do like two stripes a day, you know, kind of give myself that goal. And I think stripes are very motivating that way. The other thing I got was from a student. Uh, she brought this in uh, a week ago and oh my goodness, I was really blown away. This has hit my local yarn store. Isn't that incredible? This is Manos del Uruguay and it is the Maria, maybe that's what that says there. Um, it is a 100% superwash merino. It is stunning. It kind of gives me the vibe of the spin cycle. And I think it's about a sport weight, although I haven't really checked that out, but I'm thinking it's a sport weight given its uh, yardage. Uh, so you know what's really nice about that is that you can throw that in with fingering on a yoke, but you can also throw it in with a DK. So I really like that weight, but I love what it says inside. This is just gorgeous. Mano Still Uruguay is a not-for-profit organization created in 1968 to bring commercial and social opportunities to Uruguayan rural women. We are organized in cooperatives throughout Uruguay's countryside where we spin and hand dye our yarn. So what is better than to get some beautiful yarn but also help people. So thank you so much to my student who, who gave that to me and her mom, who's a knitter. Uh, I really appreciate this. This is a fantastic present. All right, so that's the knitting content for today. So if that's your jam, um, I hope to see you again soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe, maybe hit the notification bell so you know when I post another video. So my big news, my personal big news, is that uh, a week ago, or maybe uh, 10 days ago, I handed in my notice of retirement to my school board. I have been living here uh, for 10 years, but 12 years with my school board in total. And I am very far away from my children who live in the Ottawa Gatineau region. And my daughter, my youngest daughter, moved away three years ago. So I have basically worked long enough to, to tap into getting a pension, although I am not a full pension age. But I really have felt like it's just time to move back. I have the family cottage waiting for me, and that's my plan to go there. And I am hoping maybe to get a part-time job, not necessarily in teaching. I have applied to work in the local library near the cottage. I haven't heard anything back, but who knows? There's, there's lots of different things that can happen. And I'm kind of just going to let fate take its course and see where I go with it. I do plan on continuing with the podcast. I really enjoy uh, the connections I'm making with other knitters, with other podcasters. Uh, it's just such a great community. The other thing that happened um, was that I, I went away for the March break, which is very intensive. The drive is huge. It can be 15, 16 hours one way. 
Luckily, it wasn't that long for me this time. I didn't hit as much traffic, but I have the four animals with me, two dogs and two cats. It's on very rural roads. Um, it's not easy. So I did that in 10 days in my March break, two drives at either end. I went to the cottage. I had a lot of things I needed to do while I was there. Plus, I took a whole car load with me to try to get my stuff back. So my sewing machine is gone and that hurts. That's a hard one to, to not have with me. But I also came back and I got pink eye. So my eyes are not quite recovered and nor am I. It was the viral type without a doubt because I was also not feeling well. I had to take a day off of school and thank goodness for the half day with the snow day because that gave me another little chance to to sort of catch up. I've been really tired, headache and all, you know, all those kinds of symptoms, but it, it's clearing, it's going away. I couldn't make a podcast the way I was looking because it was not pretty. So um, those are some of the reasons why I have um, been so late in putting out the next podcast. But the house is a, a, a going concern. I am uh, packing. I have taken bags of things to the second hand store. I have taken two trips to our local SPCA. I had a lot of small blankets and they really are in desperate need up here. The lady almost grabbed the bag off of me when I went because uh, they have a lot of animals and unfortunately, sometimes they can't even take the animals that are brought to them because there's no space. So I wanted to do what I could and yesterday I took two dog crates and a, an animal carrier and two more blankets to them and dropped them off. I've been selling things on Facebook Marketplace so there's constantly people messaging me, coming to the door. I am finding that somewhat exhausting. But at the same time, um, moving forward, I'm enjoying the moving forward process. And once I made that decision that I was going to retire and move back, and we'll see what happens when I get back and where the world takes me. But um, I've also been working on cleaning out my classroom. I've been uh, with my stuff there for 10 years. And that is a lot of stuff to clean out. So I've been working on that as well. So very, very busy and not as much knitting time as I would like, but I do pick up the needles in the evening and uh, we'll see in a month what I have to show you. I, I definitely will try to keep podcasting. Although this table might be gone, um, the ironing board that I have my phone on right now will probably be gone. So it's going to be kind of an ad lib thing. I'm just using my phone today because it was easier and hopefully this will have a decent uh, video footage for you to watch and we'll go from there. So thank you for staying tuned and um, connecting. Love the comments. It gives me a lot of joy when, when I hear what everybody has to say. And I uh, hope you're all well. Take care. Enjoy your knitting. And I'll uh, be back hopefully in about four weeks. Bye-bye.